I'm Malin, and for about 20 years of my life I've struggled with low self-esteem. I always kind of had this underlying feeling that I was below others, and that was kind of like my normal set point. And this often led to me being really stifled, repressed and avoidant because I was overly reliant on other people's um, validation and I was kind of comparing myself to other people and trying to people please other people. Like for example in soccer like I've talked about before I kind of wanted to please my parents because that was something that they wanted me to do. They always wanted me to do some sort of out of school activity and that was the one that I kind of stuck with. And also I was looking for like validation for doing it well and playing well and that sort of thing. And then in music, it was like negative self expression and creativity, but also kind of like in this victimhood kind of way that I was kind of suffering and I wanted to kind of feel righteous about that and kind of get attention for, for kind of my suffering and that sort of thing rather than actually dealing with it. Luckily, I had a friend who kind of helped me with this and he's had a big impact on my life. I met him through soccer and it kind of went into COVID, so we didn't get to play a lot of games that year, but I would often go out and just have a kick sometimes because that was kind of like a nice way for me to get out of the house and kind of feel good. And then I'd see, a fr I see another friend and have a kick with him, but then I also saw this other friend that I had. And turns out he like lived around the corner, so we kept having quite a few kicks. And then while we were driving, that would have like quite a lot of talks. And the more we kind of talked, the more we kind of got to know each other a bit better. And it was kind of like a big brother to me because we were very alike. And he had had his parents, his parents had split up at a similar age. And he was like about 10 years older than me. He's like 10 years older than me. So he was like, you know, like a big, big brother to me, like a big, like a role model sort of thing. And he kind of instilled in me to like, have more fun and kind of be more philosophical and see life kind of for what it is rather than taking it so seriously like I kind of did. And this was really, he was really beneficial or helped me out a lot when I moved away and I was all alone. And I would often just call him and we'd just spend hours talking together about all sorts of stuff. And that really kind of helped ease me because I was so isolated and alone and I was just a really tough time for me and anyway on this topic he kind of informed me that you know like oh like you probably have this because you have low self-esteem like for example I found that in training I found it hard for other people to tell me I'd done a good job because I couldn't accept that I that wasn't really a part of my identity and I kind of just brushed aside the self-esteem thing like oh yeah whatever it doesn't really matter you know, it's just this thing that kind of happens. But then it kept kind of calling me out a bit more. And then I, and then I called him out. And this is kind of a good thing between a male relationship is where you kind of call each other out and that sort of thing. So he called me out on like my self-esteem and self-worth. And then I ended up helping him a bit when he was breaking up with his girlfriend, which was, which was nice to do because he'd done so much for me and I kind of had a chance to try and help him a little bit. But eventually I kind of realized that I did really have self-belief and that it's like this really big and tough problem to tackle that like ties back down to childhood. And I realized how much it had affected my life, how I had avoided relationships and women like I've talked about before and how I felt like I had to try so hard in soccer to be good at it. And I often got told that I tried to score goals too hard or that I made it too hard on myself and that I was really rigid, you know, I'd, I'd like, one guy noticed that whenever I try and kick, I'd like tense my hand a lot whenever I kick because it's kind of like a, a stress kind of thing, like where I felt like I had to control it rather than like letting it happen and just flowing and just having, having fun because really at the end of the day, it's just a game. And I just wanted to say that I wouldn't be here without that friend. I wouldn't be saying these things on YouTube because I, f I felt like I had nothing worth saying. And I'm just incredibly grateful for that because 
I don't know where I would be with, without that, without him kind of enforcing that I had low self-esteem in me, kind of realizing it, and then him having the actual trying to believe in me because <laughs> I certainly did. And even though <laughs> I had I had read hundreds of books, I'd read, I'd listened to lots of podcasts, I'd read lots of content, you know, self-help, improvement, spirituality, philosophy, psychology, just all these kind of things. And I felt like I didn't have anything worth saying. And that's tough to think, but through this, I kind of found, I found Bruce Lee and I got really attached to his philosophy and his self-belief. <laughs> he had this insane level of self-belief and he backed it up. He, he had the proof for it. He could show it. He didn't just talk the talk. He like walked the walk, like, you know, he would back it up. And there's this clip from Game of Death that's not in the actual movie, but it's in one of the extra ones where he's facing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who, by the way, is like 2.18 metres tall. Bruce Lee's like 1.72 metres tall. And he just looks up at him and he says, I am thinking that I'm a bigger man than you'll ever be. And that just hit me. I was like... <laughs> He's got a crazy level of self-belief. Like, that's insane. Like, I want to have that self-belief in myself. Like, it sounds almost delusional, but he could back it up. And he meant that because he had the proof of it. And just for your information, you may think like, oh, Bruce Lee, he was just a high testosterone kind of ambitious man. And he was, but he also backed it up. But he, he only had one testicle. <laughs> he only had one testicle, so I should have double the belief because I've got double the testicle. Anyway, the thing is though that with affirmations and these sorts of things, I felt really odd doing them and saying them because I had no proof. I had no, I had nothing to back it up. You know, all of my life, all of my experiences had kind of reinforced this negative identity and low self-esteem. And I realized that belief grows through actions, through setting realistic kind of things that you can do and achieving it and actually building that trust and momentum with yourself like I've talked about before. But also going back and realizing that reframing your past and looking at kind of your past undigested emotions, which is what Dr. K would call your scar, And kind of delving into that and seeing where it come from and seeing how it informed your experiences going forward. And it kind of made me realize that all of these things had informed me that I had a bad identity, so I can flip the script and I could start doing things that are the opposite of that, that can help me build up my self-esteem and actually create the opposite, you know, rather than feeling absolutely terrible about myself and low self-esteem like I was below others, to I'm thinking that I'm a bigger man than you'll ever be, to someone who's like, just towers over you. Also, what I realize is that when you hold on to things in your path that are negative and that it kind of grows, like if you hold on to things, it kind of grows. And we kind of have this idea that we should talk about our feelings and emotions, which is good. But then <laughs> I like Dr. K's analogy with this is where if you have everyone talking about their bad emotions and negative emotions and they're just venting in this room it's like someone farts and then they feel good and empowered by it so then everybody starts farting and then you're just in this room that smells stinky poo 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 -wee. and then it's kind of like also if you just talk about your achievements and all these bravado things that you're going to do it gives you this false sense of achievement like oh i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that and then it kind of gives you this dopamine rush you know and i think that's why it's important to not brag about the things that you're going to do but just do it and prove it to yourself and cultivate that inside yourself but to also if you do want to have like that accountability then to set deadlines with other people and say like i want to do this by this time and then that kind of gives you pressure because then you feel pressure to perform because of the other person and so it is important to accept and realize and express these negative emotions but the problem with just venting them all the time is that you get into a stinky poo-poo room and you don't actually find the solution and move forward. So rather than dwelling in your stinky poo-poo room, you should 
it's okay to express these things and kind of find out where they come from and then see how it's been affecting your past because this is an important thing that I've kind of told you through my story. And then you also got to move forward and kind of find your, your way forward to help and build on these things and, and try and make a change. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.